Balancing chemical equations can sometimes feel like a real headache when you look at one and ask yourself, I don't even know where to begin. Really doesn't have to be that way though. In this video, I'm gonna give you a structured approach or a strategy that you can apply no matter how difficult or easy the chemical equation looks. Thanks for joining. Let's learn how to do this together. I hope you're ready to balance some chemical equations. So the strategy that I wanna share with you guys to make balancing equations so much easier is called MINHO. That's M-I-N-H-O. It stands for metals, ions, nonmetals, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, what we're gonna do, the general idea behind this, is we're always gonna balance the things that tend to occur less frequently in chemical equations first. And then we'll focus on those other elements like hydrogen and oxygen that occur more often at the very end of our balancing process. Okay, let's look at an example and walk you through it step by step. As previously stated, MINHO stands for metals, ions, nonmetals, hydrogen, and oxygen. And this strategy is one where we follow that specific order in terms of what we choose to balance out of the participants in a chemical equation. So we're gonna scan our equation and we're gonna look for metals first and we see that there is lead on both sides. So that'll be the first thing we try to balance. And when I count the uh, lead atoms on the reactant side, I see one, and I also see one on the product side. Okay, next up is ions, and notice in parentheses it says polyatomic. Now here we see the polyatomic ion hydroxide as a reactant, but we don't see hydroxide OH together on the product side. So that means we can't really balance hydroxide as if it's one thing. We're gonna have to split it up into oxygen and hydrogen. You'll see in our next example, an instance where you can keep the polyatomic ion together. Okay, third on our list is nonmetals, and we do have chlorine. There are two chlorines as products, and there's one in the HCl on the left side of our arrow. Next, we have hydrogen. So we're gonna take the two hydrogens that are from the hydroxide, and of course there's two because of the parentheses and the small subscript. And we're gonna take the one H from HCl, and that's gonna give us a total of three. On the product side, I only see two hydrogens that are part of water. Okay, last up is oxygen. Now again, there's two oxygens on the reactant side because the hydroxide is multiplied by two because of the subscript and I only see one oxygen as a product. Okay, so now we see where our main issues lie, and it turns out that our metal, the first thing we would be balancing is already balanced. So we're just gonna skip on to the next thing on our list. We don't have any polyatomic ions, but we do have a non-metal, and that's chlorine. So we're gonna increase the number of chlorine atoms on the left or reactant side by using a coefficient of two. Now. I'm gonna go in and adjust my count of chlorine, making this a two. But I also have to remember that that two gets distributed to the H as well. So that means that our number of hydrogens is gonna change. And now we have a total of four hydrogens on the left side of our arrow. We have two from the hydroxide plus two hydrogens in the HCl. So that's a total of four. Okay, so now the next thing to be balanced would be hydrogen. And in order to have four hydrogens on the product or right side of the arrow, we're gonna need a coefficient of two here. Okay, and that of course, when multiplied by the subscript, gives us a total of four, which we wanted. But also, as a result, it ups the amount of oxygen. And this is where you see the um, Minho method really coming into, uh, it's becoming clear why it's so useful. And what I mean by that is we didn't have to intentionally try to balance the oxygen. When you follow this particular sequence, this progression, the elements towards the end, like hydrogen and oxygen, they tend to just kind of get balanced um, on their own. And um, that's what happened here. Now we have a completely balanced equation and 
it was easier having done it this way than if we would have just randomly picked a, an element like oxygen or hydrogen and just started with those instead. Okay, let's see how well you can employ this method uh, in an example problem. Uh, let's take care of that next. Okay, it's time for you to try a problem to see whether or not the Minho method of balancing equations is making sense to you. The equation behind me is slightly difficult and it's definitely not balanced. I want you to pause the video, think through this, and try to come up with a solution. When you're ready to check your work, come on back and I'll explain it to you step by step. So anytime we balance an equation, the first thing we want to do is separate our metals, our ions, our nonmetals, etc. Make a chart something like this and take stock of how many we have on the reactant side versus the product side. In doing so, you can see we've got a whole bunch of discrepancies here that we need to resolve. Now, using the Minho approach, I focused on the metals first. I'm going to look at sodium and notice that since there's three over here and only one there, a coefficient of three on the product side will resolve that issue. Now, of course, I have to change this number on my chart, but that three is also going to affect the chlorine as well. So I'm going to go down here and replace the one with a number three. Okay, let's go to our next metal, magnesium. Having three magnesiums in the formula for magnesium phosphate, I'm going to try to make that equivalent on this side by placing a coefficient of three in front of the magnesium chloride. Now let's update the table. The magnesium problem has been taken care of, and at the same time, we've created uh, quite a few more chlorine. Multiplying three by two gives us a total of six. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the polyatomic ion, phosphate. There are two phosphates on the right side, only one as a reactant, so we're gonna use a coefficient of two here, and that's going to give us two phosphates, but again, when we put a coefficient in front of a compound, we have to distribute that number to everything. So the two will now be multiplied by the three sodiums, and that's gonna update this table to six on the reactant side for sodium. Okay, so we thought we had resolved that, now we've created a new issue, but that's not a big deal at all. It happens all the time in balancing, we just need to be patient. So now we can go back over to this side, and in order to make the six sodiums on the reactant side equal to the product side, we can erase our original coefficient of three and replace that with a six. Now, in doing that, we fixed our issue with sodium, but do you see what else happened? We've also now upped the number of chlorine on the product side to six as well. So we never even really had to focus on the nonmetal chlorine. By following the Minho sequence, we balance the nonmetal just by balancing the metals and the polyatomic ions first. If you're enjoying these videos and want me to make more, please let me know by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment down below. I'd love to interact with you and answer any other questions you might have about balancing equations.